is, yes, this is, this is working. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for the warm introduction, and thank you very much to Hashed, all the audience, and uh, soon to be better introduce our two panelists on what hopefully is not only a very uh, technically important inflection point, uh, the, the ZKVM, and the future, of which we have two very stellar founder, co-founders, and, and pioneers to, to scaling Ethereum. But I think one of the um, most interesting of nascent technologies in terms of the future landscape and how it's going to uh, affect the Ethereum and the rest of blockchains as they uh, I guess change, the, change the world and uh, coordination mechanisms as we understand them now. Uh, so the title of our talk is The Future of ZKVM and Why It Needs Time to Evolve. We want to spend a little bit of time speaking about Scroll. We've got Sandy Peng over on the, the left and Polygon, Hermes, and, and ZKVM with David Schwartz here in the middle. Um, some of the milestones that they've done, some of the progress that they're up to, and of course, importantly, how they see in this, what will be a multi-decade um, journey, evolution of, of the technology. But just before that, I want to allow them to introduce themselves. Uh, Sandy? Feel free to go first. Sure, it's a pleasure to be here. And my name is Sandy, I'm from Scroll. And um, we're a project that's been building um, the ZKVM product for the last two years. And um, our, our team is distributed. And um, we're trying to bring to everyone the best developer experience and try and bring 100% um, kind of EVM equivalents to developers so, so that there's a seamless migration process. And uh, we're currently on Sapolia testnet and uh, we'll be coming to mainnet very, very soon. Feel free yeah, to go second. Um, thanks, thanks for having us here. Uh, I'm David Schwartz from Polygon. Um, I was on one of the original co-founders of the Hermes Network team. And we were acquired by Polygon uh, two years ago. So um, now my role is more open. I'm just more involved into the engineering initiatives from Polygon, because now we have a, a set of uh, proposals to the community uh, related to the Polygon 2.0 vision. Uh, that's a you know, set of uh, changes we want to do. Uh, one of them is the launch of the uh, Polygon CKVM. That's the project I was contributing most. Uh, but we have another initiative like uh, upgrading the, the Polygon POS to ZK and uh, uh, launch a, a new token and also uh, improve the governance. So there's a lot of uh, things going on in Polygon now related to this vision. And uh, yeah, super exciting times for, for everyone in the space related to ZK rollups. Awesome, fantastic. Thanks for providing a, a little bit of color on what's been uh, the progress and I guess top of mind for the, for the pair of you so far. Snowballing. Um, on Sandy speaking about the testnet and mainnet, and David speaking about um, Polygon ZKVM as mainnet in this case. Definitely a big congratulations in order for the pair of you. Uh, these are enormous milestones that have both recently been completed. Um, so that we can take a holistic view and, and dive into some of the moving pieces, perhaps if you could each tell us just some of the, the main challenges and the main progress that have brought you to the point of launching Sapolio testnet and Polygon uh, mainnet, respectively. OK, so uh, well, um, this project is, as, as Sandy was saying, is um, a big challenge. It's a complex one. Um, the CKVM as a technology two years ago was considered even impossible, something not feasible. Uh, both Scroll Team and Polygon and, and others now, we are taking this path of providing uh, full equivalence or uh, the seamless experience for developers into the CK rollups too, uh, which was uh, kind of a very complex uh, project to do and to build. So we were you know, covering many phases of the project. Uh, this uh, is a long path for us. It took one year and a half to build this and going to mainnet, but I, I can assure that it was very complex. F initially, you need to figure out what's the solution to this problem, which seems so difficult to solve. and. Uh, we even needed to create some programming languages because uh, the EVM is not a, a friendly system in terms of CK. A CK, for people that doesn't know, is a cryptographic environment that enables to prove computation 
uh, in this cryptographic model and creates a small proof that can be verified on chain. This is the foundation of the CK scalability. So the EVM was not friendly in, this, in these terms, and we needed to, to build many components. Um, after this process of building the components, then it comes the, the model of uh, assembling it together and make this something practical. Because also another vision of this technology is that it will be so expensive to be proven, proofs will be costly, and these kind of assumptions. And we get into this optimization path, and then we prove that it's practical and it's very optimal and efficient also. Uh, but then also you need to audit this because the, the model of trust for CK rollups uh, is related to this uh, cryptographic environment to be considered secure. So you need third party auditors to certify this and you need to provide a process to anyone to verify that the prover is there. The prover is correct and the prover is there. So this is a long path we were taking and uh, it was successful like uh, end of March this year with the main launch and we are super happy how this is going. We have uh, uh, 400,000 unique addresses using that, uh, 10,000 uh, 10, smart contracts deployed because it's the uh, same experience as deploying on Ethereum and uh, 5 million plus transactions. For us, this initial phase was about proving that this tech is solid, stable, and we can just provide this as a mainstream service. So we accelerated a lot the, the generation of proofs. Our prover is now uh, created more than 700,000 proofs already. So it's super solid and we are super proud of this, but still there's a long way to go and we will discuss probably about this later. <laughs> yeah, I think as David was sharing, the ZKVM is an incredibly complicated engineering task and I often kind of um, think about how amazing it is that, you know, both our teams and also a few others went from research to product within such a short space of time. And another interesting thing that I've been kind of thinking about lately is how teams with slightly different approaches and using different tools have settled on a very similar looking type of product from the developer perspective. Um, I think the, the, the Polygon ZK EVM team and us, we started off from very different starting points in terms of the intent and also the, the tools that we've been using to build this product. But the end product that is shipping, that's developer facing, um, is hopefully very, very similar. And I think the reason behind that is, you know, Ethereum has such a wide array of network effects and, and, and a large number of developers already. So it makes a lot of sense to try and leverage some of the past experience and, 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 and learning so that um, so we can kind of gain traction earlier without um, w w with a similar kind of um, both testing environment, tooling environment, so on and so forth. So um, I think we launched our initial test net um, around the same time, probably about a year ago. And uh, kudos to the Polygon team. They've managed to launch Mainnet. And we've been on testnet um, for just over a year now. And, um, and, 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 and we have Mainnet probably in Q4 later this year. And in the last year or so, I think we've learned a whole ton from the development process. And um, the, the, the amount of traction is, has taken all of us by surprise. Um, we have about 60,000 um, smart contracts deployed, and we have almost kind of 9 million unique um, smart contract wallets on Gorli and then now on Sapolia. And, um, and I think the, 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 the process of adding a second layer to an existing vibrant ecosystem is a really interesting one. I kind of often describe it as trying to kind of fix the plane while it's still kind of in the air. And, um, and I'm sure that the, the experience is similar like once you know, once mainnet is launched, there'll be a lot of improvements to be made. And, um, and, and, and this is, you know, a, kind of probably like a decade long journey of improving, proving optimized uh, efficiencies and also improving developer experience. It's, it's good to hear both of your journeys in, in that perspective. I think there are uh, like a facundity of, of similarities. The first and one I, I share the, the massive pain is, is the, the proof system and the design. I spent four to five years now since, since, since 2017, right from the bulletproof days until very, very recently, um, before spending a little more time on the investment side, where I was designing, implementing these proving systems with both, both of uh, members of, of your teams and even prior companies before, before both the, uh, the particular 
uh, protocols existed. So I, I definitely share and feel that pain. And to David's point, it's been really, really surprising to see the evolution um, of, of, of speed and capability on things like the Polygon mainnet with things like um, scrolls work and, and codifying all of these circuits into ZK. It was, I think, arguably um, seen as like maybe not possible, especially compared to the timeline of something like optimistic um, VMs and optimistic um, A coding, sorry, of, of, of these rollups. So I think you, we all share in that pain. And now something I've myself abstracted away from not working uh, on the protocols specifically is the best way to design it for, as you say, what's important is developer experience, whether it's from taking you know, different abstractions from, from bytecode equivalents or creating languages, knowing that Solidity is as wonderful it is for making these fantastic Turing complete uh, arbitrary programs when putting <laughs> those opcodes inside of a circuit or inside of a, a very particular finite field is a complete nightmare. But I would like to um, talk about what you see now that you've got to an ossified level with the mainnet. And I was, I was speaking to David before, and he was speaking about the, the maintenance of, of this plane, as Sandy said, that's in the air is a lot more intense than he was expecting. And Sandy, I guess yours is off the runway, but, but ready to hit the 10,000 feet. What do you see as the immediate next challenges, more in terms of the technical design, and then we'll, we'll delve into some of the, the developer and ultimately user experience in a minute. Um. Ultimately, we've never launched an L2 mainnet before. No one on the team has, and um, arguably not many people in the world have. So it's quite a unique experience, and we're also kind of learning on the fly, trying to preempt what will happen. I think one thing that we're certain is that our learnings will accelerate, and we will um, get a lot more realistic user feedback. Um, I think when people are not bridging real assets on chain, they tend to be uh, probably a little bit more tolerant of user experiences, and, and I think you know we're, we're ready for the journey, for things to get a little bit more real, and um, and I think we've been we've been spending a year trying to prepare both internally in terms of our mechanisms of how to deal with um, reports, and also how to build up a, a, a kind of a people system as well as a, a kind of a monitoring system on chain to make sure everything runs smoothly. Um, it's I see the mainnet as potentially like a starting point, um, just like when Ethereum launched mainnet was essentially the starting point. That's when you get to really engage with the ecosystem, meet your, cust meet your builders, meet your developers, and find out what they need. And, um, and, and even now, I think you know, we've kind of built the beginning of an early ecosystem, um, mainly players who are established in the Ethereum space already. And uh, the feedback we're getting is um, incredibly um, insightful, at least like new to me. Um, I think I'm learning every day about some of the, the difficulties that are facing, and I think crypto being such a, um, a value-driven um, kind of use case, it means when there's money to be made, people are very, very tolerant of UX problems. And uh, as more and more different use cases are being unlocked because Layer 2's pricing enables that onboarding, um, we're, we're seeing more and more um, stringent requirements, and also uh, users are asking more and more difficult questions about how do you kind of bridge assets from, from say like ETH on Polygon to ETH to another L2 and how does that come to scroll as well as you know how do we make the um, make the L2 more on the on, on the back end rather than something that you need to choose from. Essentially users don't really care about you know proving systems. They don't really care about any of the infra layers that that, that we care about as infra builders. And, um, and I think it's about kind of A, managing our standard of building as well as meeting developer needs as well as user needs. Um, but yeah, it's, you know, we're just constantly learning. Yeah, we, we have a lot of challenges because once um, you launch mainnet, uh, you have this uh, interest from the community. We have here in the room some partners that uh, we were basically positioned in the CKVM for DeFi because of the security levels we, pro we provide. Uh, because in Polygon, we have also this POS service, uh, POS network. That's kind of the most adopted chain uh, in the industry. So we have these uh, super low fees in one side and POS. 
and we were providing this CKVM that has higher fees because data availability is on-chain. Uh, the proof is not kind of a big component of the cost, but the data availability is. So we have several challenges. One, I would say, is important optimization because uh, many users are asking, oh, where well, the fees are in reducing in CKVM. So there's an upcoming change from Ethereum, the EIP 4844, and the prototype sharding. Uh, it's going to be very important for us because with the new, this new data structure of uh, allocation of data in layer one, we'll be able to reduce drastically the fees and the CKVM. Um, also, we are optimizing provers. Every time the provers are faster and more lean uh, as of today, our provers require a big bunch of memory, and we are trying to reduce this and provide better uh, capacity on, on this side. Um, also, we have announced with Polygon 2.0, um, the POS network will become also a layer two. This means that we need to connect the POS to a CK rollup or CK prover in somehow. So the, the POS in this sense will become the biggest layer two ever in terms of a TBL activity assets, all of this. Um, and this connects with our vision of this Polygon 2.0 ecosystem of chains where we can provide this unified liquidity based on CK proofs. So we have currently a bridge that connects uh, CKVM with Ethereum. And this bridge supports multiple CK rollups that are compatible. But at some point, we are just uh, announcing and we are building this aggregation layer that would allow this ecosystem of CK uh, chains to connect one each other and compose smart contracts. So this is allowing um, to, to have this pool of unified liquidity because liquidity fragmentation is a problem in this ecosystem of player tools. So uh, for us, this is a very important strategic topic uh, to overcome. But uh, it's another challenge. And then we have this other security challenge. Because as I said before, uh, this um, model of trust is becoming a solid prover. Uh, we have a, a bug bounty open. We are receiving very good feedback from the community on this side. And we are just maturing a lot these uh, CK provers. But you see there are many things going on forward. It's that, uh, we also have the burden of maintaining uh, mainnet because um, we have users, we, have, uh, we are deploying oracles, we are, we are building all this ecosystem of tools to become a complete uh, you know, uh, tool for DeFi, for example. Uh, as Sandy was saying, our benefit is that we reuse Ethereum tooling and Ethereum ecosystem, but still you need to complete. This, this chain needs to be uh, every time more and more complete with more tools. So the, the experience for the DApps and developers is the same as Ethereum in some way. I think a lot of what you drew on there, David, is this uh, monolithic challenge, especially now you have Polygon proof of stake becoming L2 and the Polygon ZKVM of unification between the pair of those trying to support and I'm sure make new mechanism design for cross-chain liquidity and bolster up all of these different apps across those two as well as all of the, the L2s that are, that are growing into the space of Ethereum. And Sandy's first answer is what I'd like to draw on just a little bit more, which is the, the developer experience. This touches on a, a holistic sense, I think, almost every element of the design stack, every aspect. You have something which and maybe many, many would argue isn't quite ZKVM, like, like Starkware. Then perhaps they would also do themselves. I won't get myself caught up on particular nomenclature here. But those who've made their own VM-style instruction and put it into a circuit and then decided that it was better to create their own um, general purpose programming language, some DSL that allows people to compile down to, to circuits. And then right on the other end, you have those who are trying to go as close to Ethereum and the original EVM specification as possible to make this bytecode equivalence such that people, or developers, should I say, who've, who've designed apps uh, in the past in Solidity can just pick them up from Ethereum and pop them into um, a, a, a lower cost and, and, and lower transaction fee environment such as ZKVM and everywhere in between on that spectrum. And we also have an introduction of, of discussions around things like um, risk zero, uh, so, so the risk five instruction sets and people who would, sorry, um, specifications that design VMs specifically for binding static languages like Rust and C++ and all of this is aimed at where the developer sits. I feel like Saying it so much on this stage, I'm channeling my inner Steve Ballmer running around and, and realizing that this, in fact, is the, the, the inflection point that changes what 
environments people work in. How do you see that affecting your designs for the future? And where do you see any changes or any particular large-scale protocol changes with developer consideration being brought in in the near future? Um, I think you've raised a very good question. Like the community is, you know, obviously our initial focus is on the existing Ethereum community, and uh, but going forward, the hope is obviously to make UI UX so easy when it comes to onboarding that we can onboard more devs in 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 in, in uh, who are previously working on other use cases. And um, one uh, particular bottleneck that we're we're getting feedback on this is probably to do with the stage of our development is uh, is the bridging experience and then the risk associated with that, that is something that we're spending uh, quite a lot of kind of resource and attention um, kind of working on. And then the other, um, uh, the other aspect is account abstraction. Um, I think just statistically when we look at new users onboarding, uh, a lot of the users, uh, something around, so, so, so one, one, one interview I did last week with a, with a wallet uh, builder is that something like 30% of new users are lost at the um, at, at the passcode stage. So at a point when someone's expected to kind of write down their um, cryptographic key uh, passwords, uh, that's when they lose interest and move on to doing something else. And um, so unless the draw of the crypto ecosystem is so large, um, this is a major bottleneck that we need to change. And, um, and, and that the, 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 the current kind of infra layer solution to that is obviously a kind of abstraction. It could be built in with the wallet and it works very well with um, ZKVM projects such as Scroll and Polygon. And, um, and I think there's a whole ton of um, adjacent research along that direction that needs to be done before we're at a stage where um, kind of non-financial use cases can really be talked about. And I think um, just, just back, to, kind of backing up a little bit, the, the, the whole effort that went into building a ZK EVM with fraud proofs is to provide very, very high level of security. And then the trade-off is that the scalability will have to, um, so the kind of the, gas optimization, circuit optimization, along as prover optimization, that will be done gradually over the next, you know, three to five years, and, um, and it's gonna kind of decrease in, in a kind of steady state. But initially, I think our goal is to make sure the onboarding experience is incredibly smooth, and that's why we're, we're basically working on a, on, on a get fork, and so that, you know, where we're using the most tested execution environment for existing builders. Um, but I think um, account abstraction, privacy, there's a whole range of different tools that are like ZK EVM adjacent that needs to be resolved. And, and, and that requires a, a, a kind of an industry-wide collective effort. And, the, and there are just a bunch of problems that cannot be solved by a scroll team, like independently. So to solve the, the, the cross-chain bridging problem, that requires kind of bridges. It requires kind of maybe working with the Polygon team and working with other L2s and, and collaborate on, on, on forming a solution. But the end result of that is hopefully that we can bring on a lot more users and, and you know, the whole saying that, you know, rising tide lifts all boats kind of scenario. So that's an area that we're, we're, we're spending a lot of effort and focus on. And I think when it comes to um, uh, protocol, like protocol design, at, 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 at the starting point, everyone will look very similar. But depending on where the feedback and where the interest and users come from, um, it is quite possible that the, the infra like on the ZK EVMs will start to diverge as time go on. So um, I'm curious to see whether in 10 years time, the scroll ZK EVM and Polygon ZK EVM will, be, will still be a very similar kind of product from a, from a dev perspective. Um, yeah, I think you know, these are just open questions that we're kind of thinking about. Yeah, I agree a lot with Sandy. I think, uh, well, at Polygon we have a, a clear mission that's, uh, you know, onboarding uh, everyone possible to Web3. So uh, massive adoption is our uh, goal. Uh, we have a lot of development of the community. Also in Korea, we, have, we are discussing with partners every time. So we receive a lot of feedback from them. So all these efforts we are doing in the technical side are basically to onboard more the apps and to have better UX. So this is what we need to solve initially. All the experience uh, for, for the dApps and users to Web3, because the scalability is about this. <laughs> and then we have many other challenges, of course. The, the 
beautiful thing about EVMs um, in the format of CK is that we can extend the, the EVM of Ethereum. We can do more. And as Sandy was saying, we, there's privacy features or there's other ideas. We can extend to different languages. We can, we can just figure out how we can attract more developers to this kind of uh, blockchain scalable networks. Um, there's a lot of research also in the new uh, CK formats, new CK tooling. Uh, this is also something we need to adapt and we need to uh, continue including as we go. Uh, but for now, there's this um, cycle of maturity. There's different, in my perspective, there's different waves of CK research and innovation that are coming, that are amazing, and that where Polygon also will try to be involved, and we, we are doing that. But there are different cycles of maturity. And our mission now is to apply to our available protocols the best, the state of the art, that can be applicable, practical, and can be provide the, providing the best experience to developers and users. So I think for now, uh, let's be realistic and try to solve the problem, the original problem, because uh, I think my perspective is not uh, yet done. So, but we need to keep an eye on this evolution, absolutely. I, I think the, the underpinning theme of both your answers is the time scale, and the perspective there is very, very important. This is, um, as Sandy said before, a, a 10 year journey, as, as, as David said, a lot of milestones, a lot of questions, really unanswered and unknown. You can only do what is in front of you and work um, in the, uh, I guess, directionally, the area which you think is correct. And on to David's last point, and hopefully also drawing on the, the same sort of spectrum idea that I, I started the last question with, you're talking about the extension of the, the EVM. We've been talking a lot about the future. I mean, as I said before, a decade, and I think, I think multi-decade future for some of these changes, um, and how those changes we brought about, I, I won't recap, but from the last talk, there was fantastic answers from Lisa and Charles around ways to upgrade the protocol. Many of these are exciting unknowns to be spoken about, but one thing that's, um, I guess, uh, underpinning something prior to EVM is, is Ethereum itself, and in that, I think there lies an awful lot of values, and it exists as a decentralized community. It's a permissionless, open environment where everybody gets to come, and everybody not just being the people in this room, not just being the people who, who solve the research problems, but ultimately the millions, the, the billions, however people want to, to, to quantify, and we should, we should ultimately strive for everybody. But in ensuring that you foster and keep all of Ethereum's values of openness, of decentralization, of security, of low barriers to entry, all the positivities that, that, that drove its creation and evolution and um, hopefully ultimately design choices and extension of EVM, what are some of the unique milestones and unique decisions you see in front of yourselves as your, as your protocols evolve to ensure that you keep those values and keep those values, um, I don't want to say enshrined, but held within, uh, held within the, the, the ZK EVM as it evolves? Um, so, Scroll's mission from the very beginning is um, where we're an open source project. We want to build with the community, and uh, and and you know we 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 actually kind of very actively track open source contribution to our public repo, and uh, and we devote a reasonable amount of resources while building the core product to engage more builders in contribution. I think that is a that is a difficult thing to do, and uh, the, the the results are not immediately felt. And part part of that uh, part of that effort is to kind of direct builders, um, particularly kind of zk engineers, to to do use the public source repo to build other things that are uh, either related or adjacent. Or if you want want to run the the same thing, that's that's great because it means you know everyone's stack gets more tested and uh, gets more eyes on it. And and, and that is a, a a part of the scrolls mission in the long run. And um, another part of the mission is about being kind of community first. And I think that sometimes comes in, that comes in as a trade-off from efficiency and execution speed. So um, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And you know, these mantras kind of ring true when we make decisions all the time about how to, um, 
how to do certain setups and how to arrange things and, and how to coordinate group learning even kind of internally. But, um, you know, but it's a sliding scale and it's never kind of quite on one end or the other. Um, I think when it comes to these kind of trade-offs, we always try to steer a little bit uh, more towards the, you know, community contribution um, side of things. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's just something that, that, that we're keeping, you know, top of mind while we're also trying to build a, you know, um, state-of-the-art product and high-value add, like, you know, proving system to, to the market. But, um, but I think, you know, the, 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 the process of um, providing um, very price efficient proofs um, to an Ethereum equivalent ecosystem does require multiple players and uh, contributors from different kind of verticals of the stack. So uh, one vision that we've had from the beginning and, and that's based on uh, my co-founder Yes research is that we believe hardware will add another three to five X to proving efficiency. And that's not something that we have the capacity to do internally and we made that decision very early on. So we, you know, we, we try to kind of share research and encourage third party participants to do that. And similarly with account abstraction and, and privacy, I think these will make you know, 10 X if not more contributions in terms of the user onboarding experience. Uh, and it's also unlocking you know, institutional engagement or social use cases. And, and these things cannot be done, and I don't think it should be done at the protocol level. So even though we're, we're very early, um, we're, we're very mindful of how to sufficiently engage um, and, um, and act um, as a collective yeah, in order to kind of deliver what the core focus is, which is to deliver like the best developer experience possible. Yeah, I, I think Scroll did a, a great team, a great uh, work the, by this uh, model of contributions from the community. Uh, in, in our case, we were more aggressive in terms of uh, deadlines. As she said, there's a trade-off here in terms of how, much, how many contributors are or coordination probably. In, and, uh, we were more focused on, on shipping as soon as possible to prove that this was uh, kind of practical. And uh, we had an internal team that's a very, very strong team, and we were focusing on build, build aggressively. Uh, after this uh, prover was built and the mainnet is there, or before in the testnet phase, we were opening more, more and more uh, to the auditors, many of them coming from the Ethereum Foundation and uh, this tech savvy specialist. Uh, and now we are just getting this effort of opening more to the community in terms of uh, contributions, third parties. So we want to become more and more a, a neutral protocol. This aggregation layer I was talking about, this is the vision. It doesn't need to be fully polygon. It's kind of a, a neutral uh, layer we want to, to build to aggregate different CK rollups. But uh, the values, uh, we don't have much time now, but <laughs> this is a long discussion. We want to respect all of them uh, to become decentralized. And as the previous panel were discussing, um, the POS is kind of decentralized, but we, we launch a new token to do restaking on different chains, on these multiple chain visions. So all of these we want to, to include and respect because uh, we are fully aligned with Ethereum in this sense. Well, those are two uh, answers so enchanting. We are well over time. Thank you very much. Feel free to collar any one of us. If you have any more questions around the development of ZKVM, please have a round of applause for our two panelists. Come send me down. Thank you. All right, perfect, perfect.